Hello and welcome to Church at Home. We are so glad that you have joined us. We are a church that is on about loving God, loving people and seeing lives changed. Our services kick off at 10am and we have a kids program at 9.45am. In the meantime, while you're waiting, be sure to check out the menu bar for ways you can connect with us and find out more information about what's happening in the life of our church. We'll see you soon. everyone. Welcome back. It's me, Tash, again. Today, we continue looking at how faith can help us. Because we know Jesus, he can help us to be brave and overcome our fears. Like Daniel, Moses, David, we can trust God to take care of us, even though there might be a giant in front of you, or a great big army chasing you, or perhaps there are a couple of lions right next to you when you go to bed. 
Knowing Jesus can help us face our fears. Hey, hello everybody. It is really good to be back here at Kids Church. Um, I'm on with John this morning. I'm not sure exactly where he is. Um, Sorry, Gary. I was just having a nap. Did I hear him? Hey, where are you, John? Oh, just here, Gary. Are, oh, there he is. Oh. Welcome, John. Wherever you are in your lounge room, oh. big round of applause as John comes out to join us. Welcome, Gary. Thank you, John. It is awesome us. to be here. Uh, I was having a bit of a nap, and I, th- I, can't, I think I forgot what we were meant to be talking about today. What is it we're talking about today? Today, we're going to talk, be talking about faith. Faith. That sounds awesome. Well, what, what is faith? Faith, I'm glad you asked. Faith is, I like to think of faith as being having confidence in God, even though we can't see him. We can know that he is acting, that he's real, and that he has always got um, our best interests at heart. So faith is being able to trust in God, have confidence in God. Okay, sure. You know, that actually gives me a pretty good idea of a way that we can maybe you know, show that, and you explain that really well, Gary. Thank but you. But there's only so much that people can, can hear. I reckon we can, we can see some faith in action. I like so, that. I love seeing um, faith in action. Does it involve me eating anything? It might. Excellent. It might. I'm in. I'm in. Bring it on. But uh, it's not just eating something, Gary. I'm, no. We're actually going to need a little bit of faith out of you. Do you I mind can, putting this blindfold faith. on? Okay, this is starting to sound really interesting now, but I'm still in. All I'm right. still have a go. All right, so I've got a bunch of truly delicious foods here uh, for Gary, and he doesn't really know what's, uh, what's in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to show, show some, uh, let, let Gary show some faith by letting me feed him whatever I would like from this here box. But before I do anything... Do you know how much faith this is requiring? (laughs) A lot. A lot. Uh, Before we do anything, I'm going to sanitise my hands because that is very important, kids. That was was a lot. (laughs) Bring on the food, John. Bring on the food. Alright, let's bring on the food. What are we going to give Gary first? Okay. At home, if you like these things, you can tell your mum and dad. What do we think of this one? Should we give Gary maybe a bit of a taste of this? Let's try that. Let's, let's, let's see if we can give Gary a taste of this. I'm starting to get a little bit worried. My faith is, is um, being challenged. Ooh, sounds, feels interesting. Yeah, does it feel, you feel confident? Mmm. Ooh. Would it be... Some kind of chocolate, John? It is some kind of chocolate, Gary. Excellent. Good start. Good start. I feel like that's... Uh, we'll, we'll get you to put this on this uh, plate right Where's here if you can... Where's the plate, John? Oh, you can't see oh. it. I'll just grab it. Excellent. <laughs> awesome. I forgot he couldn't see. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, what is that? Doesn't hey, matter. Good. That doesn't look like food. Um, really good start. Okay. Now, this one... This one might be good. Uh, requires a, a little bit of preparation. Don't keep me waiting, John. I, I love eating. I know that you're hungry, Gary. Mm-hmm. Let's get you fed. I think uh, this is uh, this is one I'm sure that we'll all agree. My, I, th- I think uh, Gary's got his faith in the right man here. Gary, would you like to take this? Maybe have a. Ooh, what? What is this? Oh, look. I, I think you can trust me, Gary. Okay. Yep. I'm getting it. This is John. Um... Pardon me for talking with my mouth full, but definitely apple. Am I right, John? Absolutely right, Gary. Excellent. See, we're doing a... You can put the... Uh, 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 there we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, I think we can do at least one more. We can. We, do, you, do you trust me to give a third food option here, Gary? Look, the first two things have been wonderful, John. Bring on the third one. The third one. Okay. Well, I don't know how many of you kids have seen one of these before, but... I'm sure it's a tasty and decadent treat that Gary will just absolutely love. So, John, are you winding me up? I'm not. This is uh, all about practicing faith, Gary. Right, okay. What is this? Only one way to find out. Oh, did you hear the crunch, everybody? Mmm, it's definitely. <laughs> 
interesting texture. Um, cabbage? I, 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 some sort of cabbage or, or Brussels sprout, I believe. Brussels sprout? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's on the floor. Throw it out. Ah, no. I don't want to touch it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Oops, so. Follow, follow, follow. Sometimes we can accidentally misplace our faith. Maybe putting faith in me entirely isn't the best plan. But putting our faith in God is always the best plan. I think at least we can agree on that, Gary. We can agree on that, John. Thank you. And <laughs> we're, uh, uh, we're going to kind of lead off a little bit from where we were last week in our story. And now, if you've forgotten, uh, we're talking about uh, Saul, who maybe you might know a little bit more as Paul. He hasn't changed his name yet, though. Uh, Saul has been traveling to Damascus, and he had permission from the high priest to arrest anyone who followed Jesus and uh, take them back to Jerusalem. Saul was a scary guy, and uh, to the people who followed Jesus, he was determined to stop their movement. As Saul travelled to Damascus, Jesus himself appeared to Saul in a flash of light. I remember that. And it blinded Saul. And uh, Jesus told Saul to go into Damascus yep. and wait there to be told what to do next. And the men travelling with Saul led him into town where he stayed at the home of Judas. And that's where we're at now. That's where we're at. And uh, I think we could keep telling the story, nah. but I think, I think we can do something better. I think we can. God called out to Ananias in a vision and told him to go find Saul. Ananias told God how he had reports, heard reports about Saul and how Saul had come to Damascus to arrest believers. God explained that he had a plan. Ananias believed God. He went to the house and found Saul. Saul hadn't had anything to eat or drink for three days. Ananias placed his hands on Saul. Something like scales dropped from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. Before Saul met Jesus, he was relentless in his plans to wipe out the people who believed in Jesus. Now that he was a follower of Jesus himself, he was just as determined to share the good news with everyone. Within days, he began preaching that Jesus is the Son of God. The Jewish leaders were angry because Saul was stirring up the people. How dare you! The leaders you? wanted to capture and kill him. A group of Saul's followers helped him escape at night. They lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. Saul returned to Jerusalem and he tried to join the believers there, but they were still afraid of him. Barnabas had already heard Saul's story and he stepped in to help Saul. He took Saul to visit Peter, James, and the other leaders of the church. He told them how Saul was a changed man and now he believed in Jesus. They welcomed Saul into the family. Saul stayed with the believers in Jerusalem and he preached there. Again, a group of Jews became upset with him. Again, the believers helped him escape. Saul traveled back to his hometown of Tarsus to wait for God's next directions. Well, children and adults at home, that was the story of Saul, who became Paul, Ananias and Barnabas, and how they learned to have faith in God. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it was interesting to see it done in mine. But, you know, this week we learned an important lesson about faith, how we can put our trust in God. Um, you know, sometimes it's not always easy. We won't know what the outcome's going to be. Um, it may look scary when we've got to put our faith in God and we don't know what the outcome will be, but we know that God is always going to be looking out for us. Um, as we finish this week, let's have a quick prayer um, and then I'm going to give you a question to think about this week as we finish. Dear God, thank you that we can put our faith in you um, even when we don't know what the outcome will be, even when it's scary, we can trust in you uh, to look after us and provide the best for us. Amen. Hey, so this week, um, as we've been learning about faith, we've learned that it's putting our trust in God. Um, and so this week, I want you to think about what 
uh, what you could do um, as children, as mums and dads, how you could put your faith in God, even though you won't necessarily know what the outcome is going to be. And it might look scary right at the beginning. So have a think about that, and we'll catch you guys next week. Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the... <laughs> no, 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 no. Whoa. Even though Ananias was afraid, he trusted Jesus, and Jesus helped him to be brave. I remember how scared I was a couple of years ago, getting onto a plane, leaving behind my entire family, and coming along just with Bethany, Indran, Talia, and no Caleb then. But I was scared. I was scared because I had no friends, no family living here. But I believed that God would take care of me. I had faith in God's provision. And so today, I have all of you as friends, and I don't feel so lonely anymore. Whenever I feel afraid, I have faith that Jesus always takes care of me. So knowing Jesus can help you to overcome your fears. Join us for Worship and the Word in three minutes. Welcome to Church at Home today. It's fantastic to have you join us. I'm so excited that we can join together in worship today. From Colossians 2, verse 13, from the message version, it says, When you were stuck in your old sin, your dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive right along with Christ. You are alive because of Jesus' work on the cross to bring forgiveness of sins to all people. I don't know what the idea of being alive 
means to you today, what it brings to mind. But this gathering is where we get to celebrate that, along with our brother, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And this sense of being alive has visible and non-visible consequences for us, doesn't it? That it causes us to have energy, to dance, to raise our hands and sing or shout, maybe to smile or maybe just the awareness that blood is running through our veins and the adrenaline that that creates. But it also causes us to feel and to feel deeply. However it is that you feel alive today, whatever your awareness of it, how can you express this in celebration and praise to our Lord and King Jesus today? Let's worship. alive today. Let's give him our lives. I give my whole life to one of this love by the Lamb who was slain. I'm forgiven the sin and Savior crown him forever for the Lamb who was slain. He is real
So how high would I climb mountains if the mountains will wear you high? So how far I'd stale the valleys if you grace the other side? So how long have I chased rivers from lowly seas to where they rise against the rush of grace descending from the source of its supply? Cause in the highlands and the heartache, you're even more or less inclined. I would search and stop at nothing. You're just not that hard to find. Oh, I will praise you on the mountain. Come on. And I will praise you when the mountains in my way. You're the sun when my feet are. And I will praise you in
grace, a mighty river flowing upward from a deep but empty grave. Let's praise Him. I will praise you on the mountain. I will praise you when the mountains in my way. You're the summit where my feet are. And I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the highlands and the highlands. One of church, if you put your arms out in front of you, whether you're finding yourself in the highlands, whether you're finding yourself in the heartache, being alive allows us to feel those times. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can feel. We thank you that we can feel love. We thank you that we can feel your grace. We thank you that we can feel your mercy. And we thank you that we can feel you with us right now. May you help us experience that wherever we are today. Whether we've just woken up, whether we're driving somewhere, whether we're purposefully watching on our TVs or our devices, May you come and tug on our hearts and say, I'm here. May we help you help us to feel you today. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the ability to celebrate and to worship you for who you are. I pray this in your name and give you all the praise. Well, hello and welcome to Church at Home. We are so glad that you have joined us today. Isn't it wonderful to come together and to worship God and to praise Him in song? I just love it. And it's just such an important part of who we are as a community. Well, my name is Dan and uh, I have the wonderful pleasure and privilege of serving this community as lead pastor. And so this is your first time with us today. I want to just extend a, a really special and warm welcome to you. And I pray that wherever you are, that you would experience the presence of God and that you would be drawn closer to the person of Jesus. And, and that's my heart and that's our heart as a church is that people would love God, they would love one another and we're on about seeing lives changed. If you are new uh, with us, then one of the best ways that you can connect with us is by clicking the button in the chat called Sign Me Up for Weekly News. And by doing that, you will, that you'll be able to know more and more about what is happening across the life of our church. Also today... If you would like prayer at any stage, I want you to know that prayer is important to us as a community. We believe that prayer changes things. And so if you need prayer for any matter in your life, in your family's life or for our world, you just like to pray for our world in some way, then there are hosts that are available that can pray with you during our service and after our service. So to do this, all you need to do is simply click the live prayer button and that's in the chat. And as you do that, you will be then connected with someone, one of our hosts, and they will pray live and one-on-one -on -one and privately with you. Well, today I just want to provide a, a bit of an update uh, with our church family on what things are going to look like for us uh, moving forward as a church now that restrictions, COVID-19 restrictions are easing. And that is wonderful news. We are so glad with how well Australia and South Australia is going. We want to continue to pray that that would be the case. And so it's so exciting to see what is happening. And as a result, what that means is that we can get back together for on-site, in-person gathering soon. And so we're super excited about that. So please know this though, 
that as we do this, your safety and the safety of all of our team and all who would come into our premises is really important. And there's been a lot of work that we have already done already to get our facility COVID safe. And uh, so when you come, you'll be able to see uh, all of that. And that is because we want to make sure that we are a safe community and that you are safe. Uh, we have already been working with individual ministry leaders uh, up to this point right now to begin bringing ministries and services back safely and in line with the easings of restrictions and the most recent ones being on June 19 with Step 2 Plus. And so this means that further ministries will be able to commence from this coming week. And so ministry leaders will be in touch with you if this includes ministries that you are part of. So check your phones, check your emails, someone will call you if your ministry that you are part of is going to be commencing this week or soon. Um, in regards, though, to our on-site, in-person Sunday services, well, the good news is that we are working towards commencing these on Sunday, July 12. And so we're really, really excited about that. Sunday, July 12 is what we're working towards. And due to restrictions, of course, though, the capacity of our auditorium will be limited to accommodate the social distancing requirements. And so as well as other regular Sunday services that we have, in order to accommodate as many people as possible, we are planning on running multiple services on Sunday morning, complete with kids' programs. Due to the size of our community, our team is also working really hard on providing a process that will best assist us in managing seeding restrictions and contact tracing. Uh, more information will come about how we seek to see that all play out and how you'll be able to register and be part of one of our upcoming in-person services. Uh, in order to continue to reach people online still with the good news and the gospel of Jesus and to provide an online service option for those who would still wish to do this, we will, continuing, we will be continuing still with church at home. And so we're very excited about that as well. So please know uh, that there will be more information that will come out in the coming weeks and you'll receive that either via email or we'll work out a whole range of other ways to let you know about uh, all these things that are happening so that you can work your best way of navigating all of this. Of course, there'll be an updated roadmap that will be coming out very soon that will be able to again share more information about the timing and what ministries will be open. But can I encourage you this to please be checking out our website for the latest updated information. Okay, So stay tuned to the website. You can also check out the Hello uh, e-news bulletin for more information. And if you have any questions regarding all of this, uh, then please uh, phone or email the church office at office at rbc.org.au or contact your ministry leader for further information on when your ministry will be recommencing. But please, I encourage you to be in prayer for our, our nation, be in prayer for our state and continue to be in prayer for us as a church and us as a leadership as we seek to come back to on-site, in-person gatherings very, very soon. Well, as we come to our time of, of giving today, I, I want to just encourage us around a little verse in Deuteronomy. And it simply says this, Deuteronomy 7 verses 9. It says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. So as we come and we give today, as we serve and as we worship through our giving, just a simple reminder today that our God is a God who is faithful. Our God is a God whose mercies and faithfulness are new every morning. That's the God that we serve. That's the one we worship. One who is faithful to his promises, faithful to his covenant, and faithful to you and I, even when we are faithless towards him. He is also a God of love, rich in love, one whose love extends to a thousand generations. You might be thinking that I'm not worthy of God's love. I couldn't be loved by God. 
Well, this passage reminds us today that our God is a God of love and he loves you, he loves me, he loves us all. And so we give out of a recognition of the love that he has given and shown to us. So our giving, our offering, our act of worship as we give is because of the faithfulness of God and the love evident in the person of Jesus. So let us come now and give. And if you would like to give today, if you'd like to, to join us in this act, of worship and this act of praise, then uh, you can see on the screen are all the details that you uh, need in order to be able to give. Or you can click in the chat. There's a button there that says uh, to, to give. Um, then you can just click that as well. And that will take you to all the, all the information that you need to be able to give uh, generously today because of the faithfulness of our God and the love of our God. So let me come and pray. Uh, today and let us believe that God is going to bless our giving, that God is going to do something wonderful in and through it today in our lives and the lives of our church to continue to see more lives change. And so God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your faithfulness towards us. And Lord, we are sorry for the times that we don't love you in return or we are, are not faithful to you. But we thank you that you wrap us up in your arms of love. And so we come today aware of your generosity towards us, your love towards us, your faithfulness and mercy towards us. And we just say thank you. And we want to respond today with our generous giving. So please, would you take this giving? Would you use it? Would you multiply it for your kingdom purposes in our city, in our nation and across our world so that we can see more lives changed? We give you all the glory and all the praise and all the Lord's people said, Amen. Well, I'm here with, uh, with Sam, and Sam's going to come and preach God's word uh, to us in a moment. But I just wanted to take a, an opportunity to share with our church family uh, some news regarding Sam, and some, which is both some sad uh, and uh, some exciting uh, news at the same time. Uh, Sam has served here on team now for nearly four years. Uh, in the role of church life pastor, which has uh, primarily been about leading out on the youth and young adult uh, ministry and as well as some areas around our connecting life of the church. And uh, it's just been wonderful to have uh, Sam on, on team and serving uh, in that uh, capacity. Uh, over the last four years since you've been here, uh, your wife Holly has been part of leading uh, the Belong Women's Ministry and uh, also Luca has come <laughs> along uh, during that time. And uh, he's now uh, two and a half. Well, here to share with our family that, um, that Sam has an exciting opportunity, has arisen for Sam uh, to say yes to God and to follow uh, God's leading in his life and the life of their family and to use his gifts to have a, a greater influence across the northeastern suburbs of Adelaide as a regional manager with Schools Ministry Group. And Schools Ministry Group is an organisation that uh, looks after the chaplains within the schools and so part of Sam's uh, new role, which Will, uh, he'll be uh, accepting and being part of will be to provide care and pastoral care to uh, many of the chaplains. And so, as I, as I said, this is a, a sad news for us, Sam, as a, as a family, uh, uh, but also exciting for, for you. And I wonder if you just want to take an opportunity just to, there's probably a few things that you would like to share at mm. this time. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Over the last couple of months, we've sensed God doing something new in us, in our family. Um, and it's very much with a heavy heart that I, that I leave my role at RBC after nearly four amazing years. Um, you know, we love this community, we, we love the staff, we love the ministry team, and we love each and every one of you. And we've seen God do incredible things uh, across the life of our church, and, uh, and we're so blessed to have been part of many, many amazing things. Uh, and we truly believe that the best days for RBC are still ahead and, uh, and that continues to be uh, our prayer as a family. Mm. We believe that God is on the move in the RBC community. And, mm. and just like we preach here at RBC, we're saying yes to God's call mm. and, uh, and to the adventure that he has set out for us. Mm. Yeah, and so this is, of course, it's a weird little time because we're, you know, we're kind of, uh, you know, we're, we're doing church at home. But uh, the, the hope is that um, we'll be back for church uh, in person and on site uh, on the 12th of July. And so uh, all going well, uh, that would be uh, Sam's kind of uh, final day with us. And hopefully 
uh, those who of us are here that day will have an opportunity to say thank you and to, um, uh, to you as well and we can take an opportunity to, to pray as well uh, at that time. So this is, a, this is an exciting adventure of faith that Sam is, is stepping into. It's also an exciting um, adventure of faith for us as a community too around what next uh, God has for us as a community. And so I just want to encourage you to be in prayer for, for Sam, for, for Holly and the whole family, and also for us as a church around what is next uh, for us uh, when it comes to this area of ministry and even what more God might have for us as a church. So let us be a people who are trusting God, believing him, that as Sam said, that the best days are, are still ahead and to be believing and praying into this situation for Sam. And so I'd like to take this time now just to pray for you. Um, uh, and uh, for Holly and Luca and for us as a church. So would you join me as we come and we pray together? So Lord, we do thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're a God of love, that you're a God who leads us. You're a God who guides us. You're a God who calls us into new things and that life has seasons. And uh, in this season, we've been blessed with Sam's ministry and his leadership. And Lord, now a new season opens up for Sam and for Holly and Lucas, I want to pray a blessing upon them. I want to pray your favour upon them as they step into this new role. I want to pray your blessing upon such a wonderful organisation of Schools Ministry Group and the influence that they are having across our state and in our schools. And so, Lord, we just, we just love organisations like that. And so I pray that Sam uh, would be a significant asset into that community. And Lord, I pray uh, that for the, for the sadness and the heaviness of, of heart that it is that you would uh, continue to uh, lead uh, Sam and Holly and Luca and that you would just be their peace and their, uh, their comfort at this time. And Lord, I pray too, as a community, we move into a new season as well and we consider what all this will mean for us. I just pray for your leading and your uh, guiding of us, Lord. Uh, that you would, uh, that we would experience this adventure and this new way uh, forward for us as a church as well. And so, would you guide and just lead us during this time? So again, we just thank you for who you are, and uh, we trust you through all of this. And we want to just pray God's richest blessing and His hand upon Sam, Holly, and Luca, and upon our church at this time. And we pray it all in the name of Jesus Christ our Saviour and our King. Mm. And we pray in his name and his name alone. Amen. Well, we are going to come to a time now and, uh, and Sam's going to open God's word. So you can go ahead and uh, get ready and get your Bibles out and get your pens and your notepads out. And uh, we're going to continue in our series, King Jesus, through the book of Colossians. <laughs> Well, it's so great to be able to open the Word together today. What a few months it has been. You know, as we're transitioning out of restrictions, I've heard that COVID-10 is now a thing. It's all about helping people get rid of the 10 kilos that they've put on during isolation. I can attest to a few extra kilos after my darling wife, uh, found a new passion for baking over the last few months. But with many more normal moments, I guess we'd say, I've found more focus to get healthy. And it's interesting because I know exactly what to do in order to get healthy, to drop a few kilos. I know what to eat. I know what exercises to do. I've done it before. But I've found myself trying to add more things in more complicated steps in order to get to my desired outcome much quicker. Have this at this time, take this, cook with that, drink this twice a day while holding your nose. It gets complicated and wavering from the desired goal becomes a thing. Faith can get a bit like this sometimes. You see, we come into a relationship with Jesus, we're excited We've got our eyes fixed on him. We want to live according to his ways. 
and there's this fire burning within us. But sometime later, we feel like we need to do more, be more, and add more. There are worldly influences speaking to us all the time via social media, television, billboards, etc. And these can take us down roads of compromise and eventually throws us off track if we're not careful. I wonder if you've ever sensed that in your faith. Striving, works, obligation, adding more and more to try and win points. We're in a series entitled King Jesus, where Paul is encouraging the Colossian Christians to see King Jesus as the center of all reality, not giving in to pressure from other ways, but remaining devoted to Jesus. Pastor Dan started us off by encouraging us around the steadfast hope that we have in King Jesus and what that means for us. Esther shared with us last week around how we can see Jesus as God himself, as God above all and God of reconciliation, our supreme king. Today, Paul sheds light on pressures that were tempting the Colossians to turn from Jesus. And so as we begin today, I want to ask you, is Jesus the king of all kings in your life? If you have your Bible, would you open with me to Colossians chapter 2? In Colossians 2, we begin to understand why Paul is writing this letter to the Colossian Christians. His desire to fight spiritually for his fellow believers. He's really happy, he's really excited to hear that the Colossians are doing so well in their faith, but he's concerned. His letter is written to encourage, but also to caution and to strengthen the Colossians. And he uses this chapter as a bit of a springboard into a defense against the deceptive measures being used against those at Colossae. And so we begin in verse 6 and 7. So then, because he sees possible problems and because he genuinely cares, so then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Paul is calling the Colossians toward maturity in Christ without wavering. And he calls them back to their foundational teaching and to live and to remain in Christ just like when they became Christians. Being firmly planted, rooted and established or built up in Christ is the, are the words that he uses. What happens when tree roots are established in the ground? Well, the tree stands firm and tall throughout every season. It's not easily moved. You know, we've just been doing some, uh, some work in our front yard and there are these two trees that we wanted to get rid of. They've been there for over 40 years. And those roots go way down, way down. Even when we tried with a bobcat after cutting them down to a stump, we tried with a bobcat and we realized these trees ain't going nowhere. They are deeply rooted and established. And Paul wants the Colossians to have the same sort of strong and immovable faith in Jesus. But for the Colossians, this was new. This was new. In the history of Colossae, many gods and goddesses were worshipped as a way of keeping people safe. So when something bad happened, certain priests in authority would then reveal that this happened because this particular god or goddess had not been worshipped enough. And so there was always the need for more, for their protection, more for their salvation. And Paul is saying to the Colossian Christians now that, that his God, now their God, is the one true God. And that there was no need for them to hold on to anything else. 
For the Colossian Christians, this is a huge paradigm shift. He's calling them to a state of discomfort and in their own eyes, danger. Would they have enough protection? Would they hold on to their salvation? You see, in our humanity, sometimes we find ourselves off track. Even after learning about all that Jesus has done for us, as I shared before, we get saved, we begin living out this changed and transformed life. It's amazing. But we can get stagnant, thinking that we need to add things, which complicates, which then enhances this idea that we need more in order to be all good with God. When in actual fact, the more causes division. And so Paul is calling the Colossians to live with Jesus as king of all kings, to live with gratitude and contentment for all that he has done. And we are invited to do the same. We see as Paul speaks into four critical areas of concern for the Colossians as he declares the kingship of Jesus. Firstly, he declares that Jesus is king over philosophy. Verse 8, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. Philosophy in the ancient world was defined fairly broadly. But Paul is warning the Colossians against a philosophy which is explicitly based on principles and ideals that are empty, that are deceiving, and that are against God. Back in verse 4, he tells them to not allow themselves to be deceived by fine-sounding arguments based on trickery or cheating. You see, critical thinking isn't the problem. Syncretism is. Syncretism, which is a key tactic used when deceptive philosophies of this world are combined with just enough truth in them that it appears as something plausible and it trickles and seeps its way in. You know, we only have to look around our world, don't we, to see the pull towards an open spiritual life, that there are so many ways, different ways to God, that God is in everyone and in everything or the philosophy of the universe providing signs and ways for all humanity. There is massive influence in this world. But I'm reminded that Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way. I'm the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so as we continue, Paul holds up the world's teachings of his day, in the light of Jesus, exposing the world's philosophies as being false. Verse 9 and 10, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. Paul here exposes something called Gnosticism which tried to diminish Jesus by saying that he was a spirit, some sort of spirit who just visited earth. But Paul declares Christ as full deity in bodily form, fully God and fully man, the visible expression of God. Jesus is the supreme authority who is over every power. Paul declares that they've been filled with him, sharing in Christ's power and in his authority over every rule and authority because of their union with him. Secondly, Paul declares that Jesus is king over legalism. Verses 11 and 12, In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Paul shares that in Christ, the Colossians are no longer bound or ruled by the law or by the flesh. 
But through receiving Christ and his salvation, the law no longer has hold over them. Circumcision, it was a Jewish custom, and it was seen as a way to please God through works. But Paul is saying that through receiving all that Jesus has done, his salvation, God has circumcised their flesh, which unites them with Christ and the power to live for him. You see, our relationship with God is through Christ, by grace, not works. And Paul goes on to use the imagery of baptism to represent the identification with Christ's death and resurrection, dead to the power of sin and empowered to live fully for Jesus. We read on in verse 13 to 15. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Indebtedness, Paul uses to illustrate a person's debt to God because of sin. And in the Greco-Roman world, debt was recorded on a note, on a, on a note of indebtedness. And Paul is saying that this debt to God, Jesus has taken and he's nailed it to the cross. And through the cross, Jesus has disarmed the powers of darkness and he has triumphed over them. Amen. Christ and his power bring victory over darkness. And we read on verse 16 and 17. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat, by what you drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Paul is saying that in light of all that Christ has done, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. He speaks again into this, this area of legalism. While the deceivers were telling the Colossian Christians that they must follow specific rituals and rules and regulations in order to be saved, Paul calls these things a shadow of the things that were to come. You see, these are not requirements to be saved. They're not requirements to be saved. There is nothing that we can do by way of works that can make us right with God. It is by his grace. And we read in Ephesians 2 that we are saved by grace, not by works. We can't earn it no matter what we do. And thirdly, Jesus is king over mystical teaching and ascetism. Verses 18 and 19. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they've seen. They're puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They've lost connection with the head from whom the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows as God causes it to grow. Paul encouraged the Colossian Christians to not fall for the false teachings of those who held to mysticism in contrast with God's truth. Mysticism comes in a number of ways. For example, presenting to be holier than now or trying to manufacture something spiritual in a moment or attempting to replicate what God does. And he also speaks here into ascetism an excessive self-denial, things that may appear noble but aren't actually required or asked by God, and also the worship of angels. So Paul is saying here that this super-spiritual, self-righteous, prideful attitude just reveals the significant disconnect with the head, which is Jesus. And Paul explicitly states that excessive rules, excessive rituals, and self-denial are not the path of spiritual growth. 
Attempting to grow in your spiritual life through these efforts is just as impossible as a body part developing naturally while severed from the head. It just doesn't work. We read on verses 20 to 23. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. Paul shares a really direct question here. Because of all that Christ has done for you, why do you still act like you belong to the world in some areas? And what I think Paul is actually asking here is, why are you living in two camps? Why are you living in two camps? Why are you still holding on to the law when you've been set free from the power to have to? How can you follow Jesus whilst still following the ways or certain ways of the world? He talks about these teachings which were based on human assumption, not God. Not God. Things that appear to be true, but are false. So let me ask you again today. Is Jesus the king of all kings in your life? Is he an option within a plethora of choices? You know, if we've discovered anything from the writings of Paul, it's that we live in a world where there are influences coming right at us. And many of these try to knock Jesus off the throne and take that central place in our lives. Influences that are around us, which many of which seem harmless and seem quite appealing, but are marketed to us as enough or all that we need, but are often nothing more than lies wrapped in a bow. But can I say today that Jesus is enough? He is more than enough. The King of kings and the Lord of lords, supreme, mighty, powerful. In him, you and I have forgiveness. In him, you and I are complete. Let me ask you again. Is Jesus the King of all kings in your life? And if no, what are you holding on to? that maybe you need to let go of today and surrender to him. You see, we can't earn salvation, not by enhancing other measures or taking on other philosophies or teachings and trying to win brownie points with God by being super spiritual, but simply by receiving the grace of God. His grace is more than enough. God has removed our sins from us. Yet even though we mess up, even though we make mistakes, we have access to God himself and his forgiveness. And in Christ, we have the power to no longer, no longer be ruled by sin. We have the power to say no to the flesh, but we also have the power to say yes to Jesus and yes to everything that he has for us. Psalm 103 verse 12, how far has the Lord taken our sins from us further than the distance from east to west? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word to us today. And we confess that we have had moments of trying to add other things into our lives, into our belief systems, that we've tried and strived and worked hard to try and win favour with you. And Lord, for this we're sorry. We're sorry for taking our eyes off of you. We're sorry for allowing other things into that central place in our lives. 
And we ask for your forgiveness today and we thank you for your grace. Lord, we thank you that the finished work of Christ is our inheritance. And we claim that and declare that today. That you've taken our sin as far as the east is from the west. Thank you that we can declare Jesus as king of all kings in our lives. And Lord, if, if we are recognizing today that there are other things in that central place, we just invite you back in, back into our hearts. Lord, we thank you that it's on Christ, the solid rock that we stand. We recognize that all other ground is sinking sand. And so we ask for your strength and your help as we seek to build a life that is founded securely on you. We pray in Jesus' name. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the Kingdom come and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross, for even in your son you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation. Jesus, for our sake, you died. Let's praise him today. stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored and the church of Christ was born and the spirit with the flame now this gospel truth of all shall not
Well, thank you, Sam, for a, a wonderful word today. Maybe as we've been going through today's service, maybe you've been joining with us for a while, you've been sensing God touching your heart. You've learnt more about King Jesus and who he is, and you want to come and you want to place your trust in him for the very first time. Well, one of the things that we like to do at the end of, of every service is just give people the possibi possibility and the chance to change their life and to say yes to the person of Jesus, to say yes to following King Jesus. We believe as a church that that is the greatest decision that you'll ever make, is the decision to say yes to following King Jesus. I believe that it's a decision that can change your life, that will change your life, that can change the destiny of your family and the generations to come. Saying yes to Jesus is saying yes to a life of, of freedom, to a life of hope, to a life of surrender as well. It's saying yes to a life of wholeness. It's saying, I don't want to do life my own way anymore. I want to do it the way that King Jesus calls me to. And that as I do that, I actually discover more of who I truly am and who I've really been created to be. So if you've been sensing God call you to follow Jesus today, or as you've joined with us over church at home over the last little while, then maybe today is your day. Today can be your day to put your trust in Jesus. And so right now, I'm going to pray a little prayer. And it's a simple prayer, but it's a prayer of faith. It's a prayer that you can pray and put your life in the hands of Jesus. So if you'd like to pray this prayer, then it's going to be on the screen. You can simply just pray this prayer along with me today. So if this is you today and you want to follow Jesus for the very first time, then would you join me as I pray? Dear Jesus, I'm praying this prayer because I know that real life and hope is found in you alone. I'm sorry for living life my own way and I trust that you will forgive me. I accept your love and grace for me and I ask that you would be my king. Help me trust in you and love you every day and help me to show the world what you are like and how great your love is. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer today for the very first time, then we are cheering you on. What a wonderful, wonderful decision. And we would love to know that. We would love you to let us know that you, that you did that. And so to do that, you can simply in the chat, just click the raise the hand button. And it's a button that says raise hand and I commit my life to Jesus. If you simply go ahead and uh, click that now, someone will be in contact with you and will be able to pray with you and just support you through that wonderful decision. And if you didn't do that today, then hey, continue to join us as part of Church at Home. Continue to lean into Jesus and to discover more of who we are. We'll be back uh, next week uh, at the same time, 9.45 for our kids program and 10 uh, a.m. for our Church at Home program as we continue in the book of Colossians. And so again, another wonderful opportunity to learn and discover more about who King Jesus is. So we look forward to seeing you next week. God bless and go well.